In today's episode, we're going to take you for a little tour down the west coast of San Andres to show you some of the areas that were ravaged by Hurricane Iota just a few short months ago. Interesting to note some of the progress that's been made by Mother Nature and by man. We also meet up with our new friends Carlos and family before they're scheduled to fly out tomorrow, and we get a very special dinner invitation. But as they say, before we play, we have to pay. So our day starts with work. Okay, so with that new wire in place and the connection terminal replaced, we're going to move on to the ITC5, which this is the old one, which you can see I cut out already because we're replacing it with brand new. But one of these wires was the wire that came from the wind instrument from that terminal down through the side of the boat and to the back to where the ITC5 is. But we're replacing all of that because obviously we have brand new and all new T connectors. So we're going to be installing all of this next, but basically, but if you look over here also, you'll see that the work we did at the nav station yesterday, because we had to run wires from two different directions. So we had to run wires from where the new transducers are and through the boat and the new wind, wind instrument wire and down through the boat. And they go all the way through and all the way to the back. But from the back, we also had to run these three data cables, which are here now. So they've been fished through, but ultimately these are going to need to be run up to where the gauges, the instruments, are going to be mounted. And these are basically the high-speed data cables. So just got to unwrap. You can see here is two of the Raynet cables. So there's one for each one of the uh, chart plotters that's going to be mounted here. And these are high speed cables because they're going to transmit a lot of data like all of the chart information, the 3D sonar information, things like that. This other cable that's here, unwrap it. As you might remember from when we were installing in the cockpit table to the other chart plotter, this is the backbone cable for the CTOC system. And this is purely a data cable, and this is for small amounts of information like you'll have from the GPS system, from the weather system, the wind vane, from the depth sounder, all of that kind of stuff. So this connects all that information to all the devices in the network. And this one just connects the high-speed data connections to all of the multifunction displays so that they can share all that information. So if I have a chip with the charts for all of South America or Central America, plugged into one of the multifunction displays, all of the multifunction displays that are connected to the network can share that information through this high-speed data. So that's cool. And then this one, we have two backbone cables in the boat now. So there's one here at my nav station, and there's another one up in the cockpit table where we installed the first chart plotter. They meet in the back compartment where we're going to put in that new ITC5 now, and that's going to be the hub for the backbone. So one backbone cable will connect to one end of the hub, one back cable will connect to the wire that comes through to here, which is this one. And that's basically it. Everything will be hooked up and ready once we connect all the transducer wires to the ITC5, and it will be the hub link between everything that communicates all of the data for wind instruments, depth sounder, all that kind of stuff. So that's where we're going next. That's where we're going to open this guy. And basically we just need one screwdriver. It has one screw sealing it, and when you open this, okay, you'll see that it's meant to be fairly waterproof, but there is all of our connections for the wind instruments. Speed temperature right there, wind, compass, which we're not going to be using, and rudder, which we're not going to be using because we have direct CTOC cables straight into the autopilot. 
for those. But all of the other instruments that we just wired in yesterday, the, the transducers, one of them is going to be here for depth, and one is going to be here for wind, and the other one for speed and temp right there. So that is what we're going to hook up next. So for that, we go back into the cave. <laughs> so yeah, you can see this is pretty much plug and play. I mean, here is our three wires. These are our new transducer wires here. This one is the speed and temperature wire transducer. Now this is the one, remember, we didn't install. So this is going to be a backup piece. We're just going to wrap this up basically and store it in case we need it someday. This is the one from the wind instrument that we just plugged in. And you can see it's labeled wind right there and everything is color coded. You just plug in the exact color of wire to the pin terminals and just make sure they're well connected. So that one is on. And this one is the triducer. So the transducer that represents three different things. So it has speed, temperature, and depth sounder all in one, seven wires. And that one, there's going to be a split. So it's going to be hooked up between the speed temperature set up here and the depth set down here. But of course, it doesn't have terminals on it yet. So I'm going to have to stop and put those on. They are provided, luckily, but we've got a bag full of them here. And I'm just going to put those on and then we'll be ready to plug it in. Okay, so you can see I'm just using the provided terminals. And I'm just putting one onto the end, each one of the tinned wires, and using my crimpers. Good amount of pressure. And the triducer is something new in the lineup, so they've included a special wiring diagram just for that. So again, you can see it's very easy to follow. It's all color-coded. And the only thing you're not doing is connecting the shield to the speed temperature. They say specifically do not connect it there. So the shield is going to come over here to the depth sensor input, and the rest are just going to connect as normal. And number five is just going to be left blank. And then we should have our speed and temperature sensor and our depth transducer all hooked up in addition to the wind instruments that we've already plugged in right there now. Okay, so the blue and the black and the shield are specifically for the depth side of the triducer. So that's those three hooked up there now. And now we'll move up here and the first one is brown. And the only important thing is to make sure these connectors are good and firm. They sit on there nice and snug. You've got them pushed and locked all the way down. Okay, that is good. So now this, we'll run this wire down to here and lock it in place through there. And that's just for the strain relief. But then that is how everything's going to reside right there. And then we just put our lid on right over top. All right, so she's ready to go. Now we just plug in our CTOC cables. So this one is going to go to the cockpit wire this one is going to go to the nav station wire and the white one is going to go straight up to where the gauges are the instruments the wind instruments and everything there so that is the data cable it's going to feed all of them but actually first because we've only got one white wire here which is the data communications and this one will be our bus because we need to run wires for the autopilot as well and the evo compass and then we'll have one left over for anything else we want to use in the future. And this is where we're going to plug in the long wire that goes all the way around the boat back to my nav station for data there. So that's back here. But any of these that are not used need to be plugged with waterproof connectors so that moisture or anything can't get in and attack the terminals or it will short out the whole bus. Okay, so to summarize the past few days we haven't physically installed many of the new devices, but we have taken the entire boat apart to rerun all the new wiring. We put in the new through hull, the sensor, the tri-transducer. We've hooked up the ITC5 transducer adapter that will adapt that into the CTOC network. We've run all the high-speed bus cables so that we can connect our main multifunction Axiom display here to a router switch down below that will also connect all the other high-speed data cables around to the nav station. And that is also where the radar is going to hook up. But now that we have hooked up the new ITC5 and the new depth sounder and speed sensor, all of that kind of stuff, we should have that feeding into the network. And I've already checked below, the power light is on, everything is plugged in. I've connected all the CTOC system to the existing autopilot and everything just to see if we have any data happening. And if we come around to the multifunction display, we know our chart plotter is working. 
Now we also have sonar working underneath the boat because we had a sonar system from the last multifunction display and luckily Raymarine included an adapter cable right here. So this adapter cable allowed me to hook up the old sonar to the new display. So if we hit on the fish finder option here, you can see that we've got a split display, our chart display is over here, and this is our sonar. And we can split between whatever, oh hang on, we switch over to that, we can change between down vision or fish finding sonar. So there's two different forms of display that we can use with that transducer. So that's cool, but it is all working perfectly. You can see we've got it set on auto range, you can adjust the sensitivity, anything that you need there. And you can also zoom in on the bottom. So right now we're at 12.5 feet. You can see that if we hit zoom, it brings in a closer resolution of the bottom. So you can actually see individual things on the bottom, whether it's twigs, grass, fish, anything that happens to be there, you'll be able to see it indicated on this display. Now we do have one of their new 3D sonar modules that we want to install. But of course, we're not going to be able to do that until the boat is actually hauled out of the water because we need to install a new through hull for that to be attached in the bottom of the boat. So for now, this is great. We've got a great setup. Everything is working. If we come back out to the home page, now we go to our dashboard. This is where some of our information should be repeating. And as you can see, we're getting apparent wind. Yes. <laughs> so apparent wind is now working. Now that's a big relief because it means that even though we had a problem with the wire coming from the mast down into the back, which we replaced with brand new, I wasn't sure if the wire going up the mast and the masthead instrument were okay or not. After the lightning strike, we pretty much figured everything was toast or vaporized, but I think actually what may have saved us there is the fact that that corroded terminal block was completely disconnected. So the wind instrument wasn't connected to anything in the boat. It was just sitting there like a dormant piece of equipment and wire. That may have helped isolate it from the strike or from the energy surge or whatever it was that we experienced. All I know is it's still working. So I'm very happy about that. We have a brand new one to put up anytime we want. So when we go up and do a rig check or anything like that, we can carry that up and still replace with a brand new one. Cause the one that's up there is six, seven years old. So why not put the new one up? And the wire, if the wire is working, we'll leave that for now. But again, it can be changed at the same time if necessary. But for now, we have wind. We have, yes, we're getting 11.5 knots coming 30 degrees off the starboard bow. None of this is hooked up or running right now because we don't have any waypoints or anything programmed. We got a race timer. What else have we got here? This is engine stuff. We don't have anything from the engine hooked up. But this was the main thing right here. So now if we switch back also to our chart plotter, you'll see our depth comes up right there automatically, so 12.6 feet. We've also got our speed sensor hooked up, so that's going to work also, and water temperature. But I don't know where to find that right now, but at least we know we're getting sensor input, so that's good. Data is working. And you guys remember yesterday, we met our new friends Carlos and family and they invited us to come down and meet them at uh, Westview. We haven't been down to Westview in a while because as you remember, this side of the coast was completely destroyed by the hurricane there, you know, back in November. So Hurricane Iota completely wiped everything out. But as you can also see, starting to be some green coming back. So life is now coming back to this side of the island. It's very, very nice, nice to see. But you can see where still all the erosion is, everything is gone right here. But new plants, new life, everything coming up here. And we're just coming up on the cove, El Cove. And we're going to go around the cove here and around down to Westview, which is just down there on that next point. You see the Armada's got one of their Navy ships here, so they're on patrol. And uh, the Armada base is just here inside the cove. We're going to be passing that momentarily. So we're going to go for a little ride and hook up with these guys because it's their last day. Tomorrow they leave. So we wanted to go and say hi and uh, enjoy a little sunshine. We finished up our jobs early for the day. So ready? Maybe. Okay.
Armada headquarters for San Andres, and of course the base for the ship. The base, uh, the ship just anchors offshore there. Now we're going around the cove, and it's just a little bay in here. You guys probably remember from some of my videos last year, but it's very, very pretty in here. And it survived the hurricane, luckily, because it was far enough out of the waves and the wind. But yeah, it's very beautiful through here. One of our favorite parts of the drive. This is where we thought was going to be safe to actually keep Sophisticated Lady in the storm. Because I remember a couple of people said, yeah, why don't you take it over to the cove? And seriously, I thought about it. But when we saw the, the results of what happened in the cove during the storm, we are so lucky we did not go to the cove. It was insane in there. So thankfully we stayed where we were. We got it lucky. Yeah, look at this. It's all just starting to come back green here, you can see. These are the few trees that survived. More road under construction here, but see the little bits of green that are just starting to come back to life here. Beautiful to see. And here we are at Westview. And this place was completely annihilated, gone. Yeah, Westview was completely destroyed. This was flattened completely. Everything gone, 100%. Yeah, it's surprising how much damage there was there, but it's nice to see, you know, all of this greenery coming back to life. Some of the tree stumps <laughs> actually did live, even though they, they lost everything, the big part of the tree, but uh, they're coming back to life. Good to see. So this is basically all that survived of Westview was just this concrete platform and these stainless handrails. But you can see they're even, they've been mangled because of all the debris and everything that washed up off the ocean in the big waves and just demolished everything. But it is finally starting to come back to life and rebuild. But yeah, you can see <laughs> it suffered some damage. Hola, buenas tardes. Apagamos la entrada, se Okay. I see familiar faces. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. How are you doing? Good, good. Bien, bien. Everything good? Yeah. Yes, okay. <laughs> Yeah, man. We arrived like <laughs> half an hour ago. Also. Yeah, uh, we have the lazy man who cleaned uh, the motor, but <laughs> it was very slow. Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay now. It's clean. It was very. Uh, this is for the fish. Fish food. Okay. Yeah, you can really see here how the erosion has affected the land. Uh, everything is gone. Look, it's all. Look at that. This was buried under a lot of sand, but it all just eroded away in one storm, people, one storm. But it's nice to see, look, they've, they've barricaded this off because now that life is starting to come back, you can see the little green plants everywhere. And over here, they're just trying to let it grow. They reserve this for the tourist area so that they can still make a business and a living here. But you see all the little green plants starting to come back to life and find roots. So that's what's happening over time. And even to get to this level has taken, what, five months? So it's been a while. But look at that, it's so nice to see this happening. <laughs> Beautiful. And you can see that's all that the storm left behind. Just jagged stumps of trees. But some of them coming back to life, which is amazing. But that is what they say. Life always prevails. Always. Hey, man. Ouch. 
<laughs> that sounded like it hurt. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> but yeah, just imagine the force that these walls of the, the ledge here endured during that storm because this was all... The ocean waves were coming in and exploding over this whole thing. Ripped everything out of land, everything gone. Rolled over the road and destroyed the other side same time. That's some big damn waves, my friend. Big damn waves. Just look at the ledge on this coastline. It's like, wow. But as you can see, some fun is coming back to the island. That's always a good thing. Very cool. Hey, it will take years for this all to rebuild, but hey, one step at a time, one piece at a time, one plant at a time. That's all you can do is wait. Ciao. <laughs> Well, as I think you guys know, sometimes plans change. <laughs> and here we are, maybe you recognize the place? Hello. Hola. Hey, hello. <laughs> but we are back at La Regata. And our new friends invited us for dinner this evening. So we are here just enjoying a beautiful evening. The weather is spectacular. And I think they are just delivering food now. But we want to say thank you so much to Carlos and family. It's been such a pleasure to meet you. You can't imagine. We've really enjoyed it. Thank you for coming aboard. Thank you for saying hello. Thank you for inviting us to dinner. We appreciate it immensely. And now we are going to sit down and enjoy a very nice dinner at La Rigata. As you can see. Thank you very much, guys. Our <laughs> pleasure. Wow, that looks yummy. It's the cassuela de marisco. Ah, you took that. Si. And mozzato is a seafood. And tuna. Yeah. On that, I say thank you very much again. And we are going to have dinner. So have a good evening. Salut. 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 Eyes, eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Salut. Ideal. Have a good evening. I, I, you know, I like it and I love it. Yeah, yeah. I saw a lot of animals. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Stories. Don't make a story, go to home, go, go to the go, bed. Go directly, yeah. go directly yeah. to your house. Oh, this is the nutriment wow. inside the restaurant for... <laughs> Toque de queda, guys. It's a time. It's 11 o'clock. It's 11 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? <laughs> <laughs> it's 11.30. Yeah, 
Wow, they are generous for us. That used to be the every night on the news or whatever at home in North America. They always preceded by, it's 11 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? <laughs> and now they're like, it's 11 o'clock. Are you in bed yet? Because you better be or we're going to bust your ass. <laughs> They're doing it again? <laughs> what is so it? dramatic. We need to save energy. We need to sleep. We need to sleep. We need to sleep. We need to save energy. We need to sleep. Llegó la hora de dormir. It's time to sleep. Go home. That's it. And so it ends. <laughs> Good night. Good we night. have to go or we get arrested. <laughs> Beautiful night, guys. Pretty much. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very pleasure. much for the invitation. No.